is going to be another problem, another type of problem regarding KSP. Um, this one is about predicting if a precipitate will form. So anytime you're talking about precipitates, you have to talk about solubility, and most of the time you're going to relate that precipitate concept to KSP. In this scenario, however, because this is predicting precipitates, we actually have to calculate for something called QSP. So you might have been... Um, uh, you might know that uh, there's something called KSP and there's something called QSP. Basically, QSP is, again, anytime you see Q, this is at any moment of your, of your reaction, whereas KSP, this is at equilibrium. So you're just basically going to calculate what's happening at this present time or when the reaction is happening and then compare that to at equilibrium to see if there's going to be a, a precipitate or not precipitate. So in this question, uh, this is to one liter of one molar of sulfuric acid. And this is going to be added uh, with a 0 0.0020 mole of solid lead nitrate. So as the lead nitrate dissolves in this um, sulfuric acid, will lead sulfate precipitate. So you can see that this is lead nitrate and this is lead sulfate. So there's like two different things that's going on here. So if we were to look at this in a diagram, um, if this is my beaker, inside this, this is your sulfuric acid. So this is what this question is about. So one liter of that. And then you're going to add more or add solid um, lead nitrate in here. And this is 0 0.002 moles. So then once you put this in, remember everything dissociates when it's in solution. So that or most of the everything. And uh, this is going to go and change into this. So in this solution, if we were to look at the particular model, um, you would have H plus and H plus. This is for the H2SO4. With every two protons, you have a sulfate negative or two negative. Once you dissolve this PbNO3 in here, then you're going to get Pb2 plus, and then you're going to have NO3 and NO3. So this is actually what's happening in the beaker. But because all of these ions, ions, they actually will, some of them will actually form a precipitate. Now uh, you're gonna see that um, your lead sulfate, so here's your PB and sulfate, this is, they're all gonna combine and to form your solid. So that's your precipitate. So you wanna see if that would actually happen, if the KSP is that. Okay, so to start this off, you have to understand, okay, so um, we're trying to look for the QSP. And we're going to look for the QSP of lead sulfate. So basically, um, what is the lead sulfate's uh, reaction? So lead sulfate is Pb2SO4. This is going to go and dissociate into, actually not Pb2, it's just Pb2 plus plus SO4 to minus, right? These are on aqueous ion form. So when you set up your QSP, basically this is what you want to set up. 2 plus of your Pb times SO4. All, they, they all have one as your molar coefficient, so you don't have to have change the, the exponent. So this is what we need. Then we, now we have to figure out what the concentrations are. So what are we given here? We're given one molar of H2SO4. So remember, H2SO4, when this dissociates, it's going to go into H plus plus SO4 2 minus. And if we rebalance this, we have a 2 in front of it. So if we started with one molar, that means one molar is going to be here. And we need to go and use stoichiometry or molar um, ratio. So if we go here, this is going to be two molars because it's two times. If we're going to go there, it's going to be one molar because it's one to one. So then we have just figured out the concentration of sulfate. Okay, so that's the concentration of sulfate. How do we get the lead one? So for the lead one, we have to go back up. I'm going to scroll down. Uh, lead one is your lead nitrate. So your lead nitrate, your PbNO3, 2, this is going to dissociate into your Pb2 plus, plus 2NO3 minus. How do we calculate the molarity here? Well, since we're given 0 0.002 moles in one liter, this is going to be 0 0.002 molar. And then the same thing, we're going to use your mole to mole ratio. So this is going to go into mole, uh, I mean, 0 0.002 molar. So that's going to be the concentration of your PB. So this is just to get the concentration to plug it back into your QSP. So once we have all the concentrations, we can actually go and use your QSP. And this is going to be, again, this is your lead 2 plus times what did we need to solve for? 
we need to solve for let sulfate. So this is going to be your sulfate. So SO4, 2 minus. And then my PB is 0 0.0020. That's my concentration. My sulfate is 1.0. So then if you multiply this, this is going to be 0 0.0020 molar. And that's your QSP. There are no units, actually, because it's a QSP. It's a constant. So then once, you, once you're done this, you're going to compare your QSP to your KSP. That's given in the question, right? The K KSP is here. So is your QSP bigger or the same as your KSP? KSP is 1.3 um, times 10 to negative 8. So you can see that your QSP is greater than KSP. What that means is that when you're dissolving this, your QSP, the amount of ions that you have, is actually greater than the ions you would find in equilibrium. So since at that moment, at this situation, you have more ions that's present, that's going to precipitate out. That's more ions than the solution can handle, right? Because this KSP is the amount of ions at equilibrium. That's the maximum number of ions you have, and that's a very, very small number. But since at Q QSP, that's at this reaction, at this situation, we have a lot more ions, and it's greater than KSP, you're going to have PPT. That's That excess amount is going to precipitate out into your solid. So that's how you predict um, precipitate. So the tricky part here is that you want to break down each of them to calculate the mole, uh, the concentration and then plug it back in. And then let's try another example. Example 2, this is about KSP, or you're given KSP of CAF2, and this is the KSP value. Uh, you're dissolving 0.75 grams of calcium fluoride in 25 liters of hot water. And when you're dissolving that in hot water, it's going to dissolve. And But once you cool it down, there's a chance where something will precipitate out. So this question is, will a precipitate form from this? So first thing you know, you have to know is that this is KSP. So that's the value. This is at equilibrium of CaF2. And then the next thing is that you're given CaF2. So what you want to find out or what you want to, how you want to start this is write out your equilibrium expression. So this is going to be Ca2 plus plus F minus, but because we have 2 here, we're going to balance that with the 2. So what this means is that if we were to write this KSP, the KSP of this expression is going to be Ca2 plus times F minus squared, because that's where the square is from. So then the next thing is that, well, you're given grams, and then you're also given 25 liters. And anytime you have these square brackets, that means that it's in a molarity concentration, so it has to be moles per liter. So the first thing you want to do is change this into moles. So this is going to be 0.75 grams times division bar, grams at the bottom, moles at the top, because that's what we want to get. One mole, now we need to figure out the molar mass of CaF2. Ca, I believe, is about 30. Um, F is 19, since we have two of them, we're going to times that by 2. So 40 plus 38, oh, this should be 40, so then you have the total about 78, 78 grams. So it's 0.75 divided by 78, let me calculate this, so 0.75 divided by 78, this is going to be 0 0.0096 moles, basically it's 0 .0, 0 0.01, uh, this is CAF2. The next thing you want to do is that because this is, uh, you're given in 25 liters, you need to change this into molarity. So you need to divide this. So 0 0.0096 moles divided by 25 liters. This is going to give me even a smaller number. So it would be 3.8 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, negative 4 molarity. Okay, so once we have that, then it's very convenient because then this, what we have just calculate, calculated is the concentration of CaF2. Okay, this is the concentration of that. So if we were to look back, how do we get that? Is that this 0.75 grams is a CaF2, right? So if we were to divide that into, or change that into moles and divide that into 25 liters, that's the concentration of CaF2. So how do we calculate the concentration of Ca2 plus and the F minus? Well, we have to look at your um, CaF2, your equilibrium expression. So 
this is what you have, right? So if this concentration, 3.8 times 10 to the negative 4, is that, this is going to be the same as this as well. And then for this one, since there's a 2, you're going to multiply that by 2, so you're going to have 7.6 times 10 to the negative 4. So you notice that that is multiplied by two times. Once you have this and that, then you just plug it back into your QSP expression. So QSP is equal to 3.8 times 10 to negative 4. And then this one is going to be 7.6 times 10 to negative 4. But because they're of the 2, this is going to be squared. So multiply all this through, and let's see what we get. 7.6 to the power of negative 4 squared times 3.8 to the power of negative 4 you will get an answer of 2.19 times 10 to negative 10. So once you have this QSP value, you're going to compare this QSP with the given KSP value. So they're very similar. So let's start here. QSP, what do we calculate for QSP? 2.19. So this is 2.19 times 10 to negative 10. So you're going to compare this. So you could notice that QSP is greater than KSP, that means that a precipitate will form. And that's how you do these predicting precipitate questions. So hopefully that has helped you. So see you next time.